Some of them, like Hackney, don't exactly have showpiece councils. But in some ways, the battle for second place may be even harder fought. Will the Liberal Democrats be able to hold on to their big gains in 1994? Or will the Tories stage the comeback William Hague needs to raise his profile? Claire Rucastle now reports. Back after the Easter break and campaigning has begun in earnest for the London local borough elections. Tony Blair kicked off in marginal Croydon. It went Labour for the first time ever in the last 1994 elections. It's going to be a bright, 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 sunshiny day. Oh, yes, it is. For the Tories, Francis Maud was in even more marginal Brent. Once equally traditionally Labour, it went Tory after the loony left episode in the 80s. The Conservatives need one more seat to regain control. See a good Labour council that will be working and Nick voice. Rainsford, Minister for London, went to Hackney, another marginal with a huge question mark. Infighting amongst the dominant Labour group sent half of them over to the Lib Dems and Conservatives and the council into no overall control. Hackney's been held up to ridicule over its appalling education record by the new Labour government. So will voters stay loyal? I want to see uh, a council that is really committed to delivering services to local people, uh, not posturing and not uh, en entering into gesture politics as some of our opponents have been doing. Local elections were once fairly predictable in London, and as the miserable 40% turnout indicates, as far as most people were concerned, pretty boring. Inner London went Labour, the suburbs were Tory. But things have been changing. The political landscape is almost unrecognisable from a few years back. Guessing what's going to happen this time is a lot more difficult. The 1994 elections saw the Conservatives massacred throughout the capital. They lost seven of their remaining 11 boroughs in a prelude to their general election disaster. On Thursday, they launched their London challenge to Labour, showing how they've made comebacks nationally from both Labour and the Lib Dems in local by-elections over the past year. But in London, it's less certain. Their tactic has been to play down their chances. It is unrealistic of us to think there's going to be a sweeping great landslide here in, in our favour. The government's still very popular, but if a borough or two comes our way, a council or two comes our way, then so much the better. The Tories are now denying rumours they might lose flagship boroughs, Westminster and Wandsworth. Norman Fowler, targeting more prosperous West London, was highlighting Labour's apparent bias to the regions. What many people in London will resent um, is the way that this year the Labour government have deliberately skewed uh, the settlement as far as Grant is concerned away from London. 50 million pounds going out of London uh, to other places. But over large swathes of East London the Conservatives have given up, not even fielding a full slate of candidates. Embarking, there are just five candidates for the 51 seats, not one of which are currently Tory. In Haringey, they're 49 out of 59. In Newham, 37 out of 60. And Tower Hamlets, 33 out of 50. Experts are genuinely divided over whether the Tories can pull back this time round. They had the worst result four years ago uh, in the whole history of London government since 1964. So it seems to me inconceivable that they won't make some recovery. And if they cannot get back four or five boroughs minimum, then William Hague's boast that he's going to measure the success of the Conservative Party's recovery in terms of local government election results and victories is going to be sounding rather hollow. But to others, Labour's astonishing election results indicate the opposite. Publicly, Labour will say they can't beat their performance in 1994, which was a pretty good year. But in London, there are quite a few little black spots, places that ought to be Labour like Brent, like Lambeth, that they didn't take control of. And I think they'd be secretly disappointed if they don't uh, add to their tally. If you look at last year's general election votes and apply them to the London boroughs, Labour ought to gain five boroughs they didn't win last time. But the main winners in 1994 were the Lib Dems. It's their astonishing progress in local government across the capital which has caused so many of the recent upsets and sent so many boroughs into no overall control. In 1971, they had just nine councillors. Now they have 373 and control three boroughs. They don't look likely to pick up any more, but having tranced the Tories, they're now turning their sights on Labour's so-called rotten inner-city councils. Labour often are bad local authorities, they're bad local government, they've delivered bad services. There's no cool Britannia in local government run by Labour. And the reality is that Labour will lose seats to us and may lose boroughs to us too on May the 7th. 
Local elections are always a test and usually a slapdown for the party in power. But starting as they do from such a high point, Labour have far less to fear than the Tories this time round. Holding their position would be a major achievement, but if the Tories don't pull back, their situation will start to look terminally serious, and William Hague's position shaky indeed. This is Claire Rucastle for Crosstalk. Claire Rucastle on the stump with the London parties there. John Randall, Richard Ottaway in Claire's film being very modest in his uh, aspirations for this election on the, on the Tory side, but it's pretty amazing, isn't it, that you haven't got more candidates in some of these boroughs like Barking. I mean, you are a national party. Yes, I, I think what we've seen uh, is, is much more concentration on targeting. Um, it's quite interesting, actually, in my own borough in Hillingdon, we've uh, seen f far fewer Liberal Democrats than we had in 94 and they're obviously concentrating their efforts elsewhere. After all, they did extremely well in the general election, um, getting many more members of parliament with actually less votes nationally. So we, we've got to pick up some points from this. So perhaps uh, it's uh, an indication that we are actually putting our efforts elsewhere into the seats that we think we can win. Tony Coleman, um, that point that Peter Kellner made in Claire's film, um, really, you would actually like to make some gains, wouldn't you, in these elections, although you, you'll never admit that publicly. The fact is, it would be very nice to get some of these councils you didn't get last time. Yes, but as David Cowling said, you know, 1994 was a very much a uh, high watermark. You know, in Merton, where I was leader, we went from a one-seat majority to a 23-seat majority. It was an enormous swing. And uh, I'd very much like to win Wandsworth. It is neck and neck there. Uh, but it would need, uh, again, a further 8% swing. So these are huge swings that are needed. Well, we'll talk about Wandsworth and, and perhaps Westminster in a moment, but let me ask you, Jenny Tom, um, Richard Ottaway was also making the point that, of course, it's very difficult because the government are still very popular, according to the national opinion polls. Now, that's, if anything, even more of a problem for the Liberal Democrats than it is for the Conservatives, isn't it? I mean, you're not making a huge impact on the national political scene at the moment. Yes, but I think we have made a huge impact in London, particularly in lo local politics. And what you have to understand is that the Labour Party in power in a lot of London boroughs is not the Labour Party. It is not the Cool Britannia Labour Party. It's not the Labour Party of Tony Blair. There's some pretty, pretty disgracefully run boroughs in the London area. And that's where we think we can make headway. Now, isn't that a point, Tony Coleman? Because uh, there are one or two councils that one suspects that Tony Blair and some of his leadership colleagues wouldn't actually be too sorry to see going to another party. Oh, no, not at all. Hackney, I, I think Hackney, which has been in complete well, confrontation what, with the government over yes, education. But what happened there was a, a, a number of... Uh, uh, um, Labour Council, as elected as Labour Councils, uh, decided to call themselves New, new Labour and shown their colours now that they're standing as Tories. It's the Tories who have failed in hacking. Come on, well, Tony. Absolute oh, failure there. I mean, absolute failure there. I, I'd, advise come over to John I'd advise you come over to Hillingdon because I, I think there you'll see the, the, the true nature of whether it's old Labour or whatever. Uh, the fact is it's an appalling council. I think you're deeply embarrassed by it. Um, somebody's remarked to me yeah, today the that, that, are, I know. <laughs> that what, you, what you've got there is the, the similarity between a Labour, a Labour Council and uh, a Rhino. They're very short-sighted and both charge a lot. John Randall, let me ask you about an embarrassment for the Tories, which is Westminster. We've seen further developments in the Dame Shirley Porter saga. Amazing. Do you expect uh, the Tories to suffer a bit for that in Westminster? Um, to be perfectly honest, I'm, I've been working uh, down in Hillingdon, and that's where I know what's going on. And the reaction I'm getting down there was very much like it was in my by-election that um, there's a swing coming back to the Tories. Um, I can't say what's happening in Westminster. Um, basically, we've been out working in our own areas, but um, you have to remember, you were saying 94 was a high watermark. Well, obviously, 97 was an even higher watermark for you. So if your general election swings were carried on, then you would expect to do well in those areas. Jenny Tonk, let me ask you, one of the big difficulties, all politicians complain about this, is that it's very difficult to get results in local elections which actually reflect local issues. People tend to vote according to national party loyalties. Now, how do you break through that? Well, I think we already have broken through it. I think the Liberal Democrat style of local government has shown people that there is a different way for local government. Well, it hasn't in Wandsworth and Westminster. Where I think it you hasn't, hasn't got in, a what, in Westminster because we haven't been trying particularly hard there. We're just letting them rot away in, in their own way. Um, uh, coming back to Westminster, I mean, it really is a quite disgraceful example of what the Tories get up to in local government. 
And I was very amused at Norman Fowler saying that the present government had, had taken finances away from the London boroughs. When they, when they were in power, they actually poured money into Westminster and Wandsworth mm, to favour the, the Tory-held boroughs, to show an example to the rest. I mean, a plague on both their houses. They're quite disgraceful in many areas, and we are reaping the benefit. Nevertheless, just on that issue about money going out of London, I noticed that one or two of the would-be mayoral candidates, Ken Livingstone, Trevor Phillips, one or two other people, have mentioned this money that we spend, for example, in Scotland mm. uh, as opposed mm. to London. Isn't, this, uh, isn't the government beginning to get a little bit vulnerable on this issue? Well, this is according to what's called the Barnett Formula, which was set by Joel Barnett, Chief Secretary of the Treasury, back in the 1970s. Uh, uh, there is no move to change that, but I certainly believe very strongly that London does actually subsidise the uh, rest of Britain. I, I'm obviously, as the MP for um, Putney, part of Wandsworth, I'm fighting to ensure that Wandsworth continues to get its sort of large Yes, it's received from the previous government and did quite a good job this time. But I think a lot of outer London boroughs need to come up to the spend levels of Wandsworth and then they can charge the same level as Wandsworth. You may know Wandsworth has got some £30 million pounds still in its coffers uh, and uh, if the Labour Party took control in Wandsworth, uh, they would either spend more money without an increase in the council tax or even lower the council tax. You know, that is the nature of the Wandsworth dimension. John Reynolds, you wanted to Well, I was just there. going to make a point, actually, with regard to John Barnett. Actually, he has advocated a change to it, of course. So that with regard to that Barnett formula um, and the money spent in Scotland, that it, there is actually becoming a widespread feeling that uh, it is unfair, and I think the government will have to look at that. But if I could just return to your point about local issues, I think we probably would all agree, possibly not Tony, because you'd be on the receiving end of it, that if we concentrated on local issues, um, I, I mean, we... We are canvassing on it, we are, and, and no, the Liberal Democrats always do. Yeah, so um, Labour, well, they're not in Hillingdon, I have Good to record. say. But nor, if it was down to local issues, there'd be a lot of Labour-held councils that would be lost. Unfortunately, that is rubbish. they don't uh, vote on that. They'll be voting on the, the general feeling at the moment. Um, and there, sometimes people aren't aware. And of course, the, the, the tying up with the referendum is, 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 is even more confusing issue. I, I just wanted to talk about the referendum for a moment. We haven't got much more time. Jenny Tong, do you think that the fact that there will be a referendum on whether London should have a mayor will actually increase turnout a oh, bit, I, create a bit more I of do excitement? Hope so, yes. I hope so, too. I think All it will create, create a lot of excitement. Um, and I'm glad it's on the same day, and I hope it improves the turnout, because if we have an improved turnout, the Liberal Democrats will do well. Uh, Tony Coleman, stories in today's paper suggesting that uh, Tony Blair's favour has now fallen on Tony Banks mm. as the most likely uh, approved candidate in London yes, for the mayoral do, do, uh, do you share that view, or have, has your pager not gone off yet? D d I assure you that uh, it will be a matter for the uh, Labour members in uh, uh, of the members of the Labour Party in London to make that decision. So it's a, you know, you may well have a situation where all sorts of names are being put forward, and Tony would be an excellent uh, mayor for London. Um, but uh, you, 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 it's you going say, to happen in the future. You say that members will if have the, the decision. people of London decide on May the seventh, mm. we've got to get through Ken the referendum to start with. But, but will Ken Livingstone be on that short list? Of I'm London sure he members? will, so along he with with a number of other candidates. Uh, in you know, we are into a, a one member one vote, and we're. Uh, very much a democratic party, unlike the Conservatives, just oh, waking up to it. I think and we're the, far and ahead the, and of the you now, Democrats. actually, but well, uh, well, I think you really know that. Maybe an Archer Banks contest. An Archer Banks Hughes contest. <laughs> Thanks very much. It's now over to Anna Maria Ash for the rest of the day's news.